Is ETL really dead? If you are ETL developer, then this video is for you. I haven't made a new ETL pipeline in weeks and soon you might stop making them too. The ETL pipeline is built to extract, transform, load data from various sources into your data warehouse. But isn't it already getting replaced by managed pipelines? Plus, the ability to run federated query across platforms makes fetching data in real time even easier. And as data democratization becomes more popular among businesses, it is changing how we traditionally build data warehouses. If you are a data engineer who loves creating ETL pipelines day in and day out and derive happiness from that task, then that happiness is short-lived. And I have bad news for you. With the recent advancements in technologies, especially around data and analytics services, zero ETL is a possibility now. We may stop creating new ETL pipelines much sooner than you think. In this video, I'll share a few upcoming concepts that are gaining a lot of traction across different enterprises. Moreover, as a data engineer, it is very important for you to be aware of these concepts. These concepts won't just impress your colleagues and earn you applause, but they will also prepare you for future changes. Now let's dive deep into the zero ETL integration concept and how is this becoming a possibility now. We all know that extract transform load is a very widely used process in any data pipeline. It forms the basis for any data warehouse environment. And you may be building ETL pipelines as your daily task too. What if I tell you that ETL is not required anymore? Introducing zero ETL concept. In zero ETL concept, the ETL steps in traditional pipelines are not required anymore. These steps are replaced by managed pipelines. The managed pipelines are services that allow users to specify source, target, and frequency of data refresh along with other configurations. Some of the popular services available in the market are AWS Data Pipeline, Azure Data Factory, and Google Data Flow. Additionally, with more and more platforms supporting federated queries now, zero ETL is becoming a reality way quicker than ever. So this brings me to the second concept of this video, which is federated query. Federated query allows a single SQL query to fetch data from different data sources. For example, I have a Redshift data warehouse and I'm running a SQL query that fetches information from various data sources. It is possible to fetch data from Amazon RDS, Amazon Aurora, Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon S3, all from a single SQL query. Now you don't have to create ETL pipelines to fetch data from these services into staging tables. You can read the data at runtime by directly running queries into your source system as per your requirement. I hope this is starting to make some sense now and you might also see the possibility of zero ETL arriving sooner than expected. But now, you must be thinking what about the SQL query performance? When I bring the data as part of ETL process, the data resides in my local tables. The read performance is very fast. What happens in this case when I'm trying to read data from different sources at real time? The federated query is smart enough to push the filter conditions to the source and get only the required columns and rows to speed up the query. Let's take an example to understand this point more clearly. Say the table I'm querying has 1 million rows in each of the different data sources mentioned here. So Amazon RDS table has 1 million rows with 10 columns. Amazon Aurora has 1 million rows with 25 columns. Amazon DynamoDB has 1 million rows with 32 columns. And Amazon S3 has 1 million rows with 40 columns in it. So now what will happen, Redshift will push the filter conditions and required columns information from SQL query to respective data sources. Each data source will work on the information received as part of SQL query and will return only the required number of rows and columns back to Redshift. Remember that the entire table is not returned unless it is required as per SQL query. There may be some performance difference when compared to local ETL tables 
but the benefits that come by not maintaining a pipeline are far more let us also talk about some of the challenges that will explain why zero etl is already not here the biggest challenge i see is not all platforms and services support federated queries so till the time sql queries become compatible across different platforms we may see some delay in zero etl becoming the new norm this brings me to the third point of the video which is data democratization it is a very important concept that indirectly pushes for zero etl i'll explain it with an example say you are working for a client and the business users want a report to support a decision however the business user is dependent on data engineers to provide data required for report and analysis as a data engineer you will work hard to get all the data and generate a report to be shared with the business user as per the request once you share the report with business users the task is done and everyone is happy however this dependency of business users on data engineer sometimes results in delays this gives way to the concept of data democratization it allows all the users to understand and access the data this includes even the non technical users like business users and domain experts the solution to implement data democratization can be simple or complex depending on level of support you want to provide to the end user a very basic example can be a visualization tool like amazon quicksight tableau or power bi another option is to create your own tool internally giving you access to all the important data sets you need to manage data governance carefully to ensure only authorized users can access the correct data while this might add more work it offers greater flexibility compared to existing marketing tools so make sure to consider your choices carefully let's do a quick recap of all the good things we have learned in this video etl is without a doubt most important concept in any data pipeline however zero etl is a reality too and is gaining popularity very quickly things supporting zero etl are managed pipelines and federated querying on technical front and data democratization on the business front so now tell me did you already knew about these concepts or did you learn something new today if you enjoyed this video and are watching it till here please like the video drop a comment as it helps with the youtube algorithm if you are just starting to learn about etl i suggest checking out my other video where i break down etl components step by step you can watch it here additionally i have experimented with a fresh presentation style for explaining etl concepts in this video i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments your feedback helps me understand if this approach resonates with you 